Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So we're just getting ready to watch Marcus Waring's Tales from a Kitchen Garden. It's episode eight and hopefully we're going to be featured in it. So keep watching and let's have our reaction to this video and how it goes. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Put over. Come on. Hey, yeah. Let's get sat down. <laughs> they fell off the boat. Oh, so it started already? Come on, the intro. Okay. Let's see. Have you been, have you been enjoying this? Are you excited watching Baba on TV? Uh, oh, look at the chicks. Are you excited watching Baba on TV? So there we go. So far, we've got hardly a reaction from the kids seeing their dad on TV. But let's see what what happens when they see it. One of those chicken look You get a huge reaction if you were five. So kitchen garden visit to Marcus Marcus's native. Where are my glasses? Lanc Lancashire inspired. I'll say. I'll say. I'll say. I'll go say on, it. You read it. A visit to Marcus's native Lancashire inspires him to introduce some rare breed sheep and he gets a lesson in growing spices from chilly enthusiastic mutton. Mutton. <laughs> mutton is my dad. Right here. <laughs> this guy right here. Okay. Really nice house. Oh, he's got his own little lake. Mm. Well, the duck house. <laughs> oh, he's putting netting over so the That's birds don't eat his plants. I remember when we put disc in our trees. But we don't need to put netting over our plants because of the way we use interplanting. So the per the insects and birds don't know what's where our plants are. Because and um, on the trees that we have, and we put some discs there you know, to keep the bugs away. And our cherry tree, because the crows kept eating the cherries. You want goats, Dad? I want some goats, yeah, definitely I want some goats. You can milk them. <laughs> You can milk them. No, I'm not saying that you specifically. I'm saying just that the us goats are milkable. Oh, look at his horns. Look at. But the flies would be. Okay. Annoying. Oh, he's getting some sheep. What are you doing? Shearing a sheep. Mhm. Mm sheep. Well, who's watching someone sheep? Shall I get one of them for your hair? No, sheep. Meh. 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 Oh, <laughs> this bull doesn't have wool for hair, he has hair for hair. <laughs> oh, so you're excited to see me? Oh, yeah, I'm hmm? Can we just skip to the part where we see you? No, it's on TV, we can't skip forward. It's not a video. Uh, you pause it and then you wait for a minute and then you. Why don't you just watch it? Because no one wants to see a guy <laughs> sharing the sheep. No one wants to see a guy sharing I do. I want to see. I'm going to leave it to the end. See, that, that's my. Uh, would you would you like to live on a farm like this? I and mean, we could have sheep, and we could have horses, and we could have goats and cows. A horse could kill. One physical job. Yeah. I'm just saying. So going to chicken. I thought he lived in Lon London, not Lancashire. He does live near London, but he's coming to Lancashire. Lancashire is near Manchester. What? No, no. Does he do a lot of your weird laughing? What do you mean, my weird laughing? Weird it's weird when I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like that one. Like that one. I've got a weird laugh apparently. Oh, crazy girl. The animal. So he's, no, so he's normally be going, going out seeing things. Animal. Then, doing, then doing some growing in his garden. Then doing some cooking. So hopefully we'll be up after he comes back from the sheep. I think we should show them what's going on in there as well. You're covered in crumbs. <laughs> thank you. You're going to make a mess. Yeah. Double, thank you. You can clean it up. I'll clean it up now. Oh no, not that type of clean up. Oh. <laughs> So, yeah, Marcus Wearing is the chef from MasterChef. Oh, yeah, I used to. He's watch going back it. to the plot now, so maybe it's our tale. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it. Yay! Yeah. There you go. How are you? 
Dad's on TV. Mommy! 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 So he seems the perfect... Mommy, now you have towels! Did you bring those? Mommy! Yeah, I brought all this from home. Dad, what? I'm going to get a little pot. Why you have a... The main thing is about getting your soil and your climate right. So I start these chilies yeah. off in my house, probably in about December time. Right. So December time, and then I overwinter them in the home. But early spring you can move them into an unheated greenhouse and give them do you know get them outside and get them growing get outside. The sun. yeah i mean the sun is obviously the most important thing absolutely so um i've got some ginger here and what i've done with this is i've sprouted the ginger so um if you look at these little shoots here so what i did was i bought some normal ginger a piece of ginger and i soaked it for a couple of days that soaking give do you know just revitalizes it all right uh and then Simple trick, seal it in a Tupperware tub like this and store it somewhere warm. And that, that grows? From the side, this will start swelling yep. and swelling and swelling and you'll start getting the ginger tuber forming. And once it sprouts, just pot it up into a nice pot. If we go towards the side here a little bit. Gives that room? Yeah, for it to grow. So now if you cover that up, just bring that all in. Leave the green part, so uh, anything above there, leave that exposed. Look at that, he's going to be growing his own ginger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Marcus is tall or if he's in your shoes. I think it's the second one. <laughs> Dad! Yeah? Where are you? You're here with me. I've never eaten. That would explain why um, I'm almost as tall as him. In its flavour, it's got a real zing in it and it's crispy. So you can taste the difference. You can taste the difference. Can you? Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good to know. I also want to grow chilies. Maybe not as many as Motin, but I would love to be able to pick and cook my own. This is Lasea pepper, and these are very mild. What we do is, you know, if you've got seeds that are really hard to germinate, take your tea bag after you've made your morning cup of tea, soak it again in some water, allow that water to cool and use that to soak your seeds in. Because tea is mildly acidic, it breaks down the seed coating. Right, okay. And it just okay. encourages it to germinate a little bit faster. Okay. There's, there's my tea so I didn't expect oh, that. It, it's a really good technique. Mommy. Well, one thing there is in my house Mommy. is plenty of used tea bags. Okay. Mommy, <laughs> like uh, uh, avoid the milk <laughs> because that can cause it to go more. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to take our tea solution oh, and just pour excited. it into the, into the pot and <laughs> get these seeds out. Like Give it a light dusting of compost. <laughs> Hungarian hot wax. These are the same chilies here. And how many chilies would you get on a plant as big as that? If you give it the season, you can quite comfortably get 50 chilies on it. Uh -huh. So the last one? What's that uh, one? This is one that I like to grow for fun. Uh, this is called the Carolina Reaper. Hold on. That last bit there, the Reaper, <laughs> is, is death. Uh, pretty much. Um, I mean, th these are bred in Carolina, um, South Carolina, uh, and this is the hottest chili in the world. <laughs> so up to about three and a half million Scovilles. Chili heat is measured in Scovilles. It ranges from zero to over three million. The higher the number, the hotter and more pungent the flavour. They're good for sauces, actually. I mean, we, we make pickles out of these chilies, and as a small condiment <laughs> yeah, to your meal. There we go, Carolina nice. Reaper. I'm going to stick with these, OK? <laughs> I'm going to stick with these. You're trying to kill me. They're, they're fun. Do you know what? I am tempted to, to grow them because I even just out of curiosity. I hope uh, you get as much pleasure as I do out of them. Thank you. I feel like I'm handling something very dangerous. I, I explained the, I explained the Scoville chart to him. He didn't understand it. Oh, there, there's, there's a mother. I'm going to stick with these. Okay? I'm going to stick with these. You're trying to kill me. This one, do you know what? I am tempted. So, because I'm just out of curiosity. You did do a weird laugh. You did. I did do my weird laugh, didn't I? Thank you. Oh, see, so he's going to put him in his greenhouse and he's going to try and grow him in there. Something very dangerous. It's not dangerous. It's not dangerous at all. <laughs> He's put a danger next to it. Can you eat those flowers? Can you eat that? 
No, we didn't get to eat. I don't know. Uh, uh, we didn't get. <laughs> no, we didn't get to eat there. Why? It would have been nice to eat his cooking. He's, he's one of the best chefs in the world, so it would have been nice to have that. Dad! Yeah. Where am I? Where are you? You're here at home with me. Oh, perfect for this sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think? <laughs> so, what did you think, guys? Cooking like this. Your I think my pot's finished, yeah. What did you think? Huh? They put us on for a good, good time, didn't they? See, this is the thing that I really liked about this. So, guys, what did you get? What did you think? Good. And the weird laugh strikes again. And the weird laugh strikes again. <laughs> And it struck again. So we just watched, uh, well, me on Marcus Wearing's Tales from a Kitchen Garden. Uh, the thing is, I absolutely loved doing the shoot for it. It was really enjoyable, really had a great time doing the film shoot. Marcus was actually a really nice guy. Do you know, when you, when you, when you meet a celebrity for the first time and you think, okay, what are they going to be like? This guy was really chilled. Do you know, everyone on set was really chilled. They treated us... Uh, the treat us with a lot. Him, I just want to meet him as well. <laughs> <laughs> See, you do want to meet him. He's a he's a nice guy. He, he is a nice guy. I mean, the the staff, everyone who were filming, they treated us with a lot of respect. They called us down there. The way they the way they showed us around, the way they treated us, the way they made accommodations for us. Absolutely beautiful people. I really enjoyed it, and I was worried that it's going to be like a thirty second snippet or something like that. It turned out to be a really nice segment and absolutely beautiful. So if you haven't seen it, you can catch it on an iPlayer. So BBC Two iPlayer, it's called Tales from a Kitchen Garden. Do go and check it out. It, I, I'm absolutely blown away by it. I mean, I've loved the series so far. It's something that I'm really, yeah. Um, didn't you say there was an um, apple called um, Arch? Apple Orchard. No, there wasn't an Apple Arch. There was an Apple Orchard. Oh, but in that Apple Arch. Orchard, we were going around. We walked around the Apple Orchard, and I was eating his apples. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, what? I'm, it, it, brilliant. I mean, that what he's done is the thing that I'm absolutely dreaming about. It's one day that we can move from being in the city and getting out onto a farm and getting onto some land and then building a real home out there and building a home with nature. That's something that I'm just dreaming of and one day, inshallah, inshallah, it'll happen. But we'll see, we'll see. For now, we'll do what we can in the house that we're in. But I've really enjoyed that. Do go and check it out. Like I say, BBC Two iPlayer, it's there. Yeah, you'll watch it and I'm really proud of what's happened. Yeah, I'm really proud of the, the our segment. So I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.